welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well today for Scent Sunday. I thought I would walk you through my current fragrance wish list. Now it's pretty big. I have a lot of things that I would love to purchase and specifically with this wish list, I wanted to talk about the scents that I've sampled. I know, like I know I want these. <laughs> like it's just kind of time, place, when they'll get added to my collection, I can't tell you. But these are the things that I have sampled, I have tested and are on my my to buy actual list. The reason why I kind of distinguish it is because there are things that I've just never smelled and really want to and potentially the best way to smell them might be like buying the full bottle and just going for it unfortunately but that would still be like a blind buy. I don't know if I actually like those scents. These scents I all really really like and if anything I hope that this can give you a little bit of an idea of my palette, what I'm enjoying at the moment, that type of stuff. These are all quite expensive. Part of the reason they're also on the wish list is because it just is going to take a little bit of time for me to kind of slowly add these to my collection. So I hope you guys enjoy. It's kind of a lot. I'm going to try to whip through them and let you know why I like them. Just like key little things about them. So let's get into it. I'm going to start actually with a house that I just love and that's Initio. There are a lot of fragrances from Initio that I love. Sam also really loves this house. Like I'm not going to lie. Have I smelled one that I like don't like? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I think though first on my list to purchase is Side Effect. I just love it. This is the sample that I purchased and it is almost done. I have like the tiniest little drop of juice at the bottom. This scent is rich and boozy. It has notes of tobacco. I believe it has like a rum note in it. It has vanilla. It's sweet. There's almost something kind of medicinal that comes across from this. Almost something. I don't want to say syrupy but it's it's thick. It's heavy. It is not playing around. It is this sexy nighttime fragrance. I think this would work best for cold months, but I've already worn it in like hotter weather, but at nighttime and I still really like that. I just, I love this. To me, this also has like a rich woody note to it that I sometimes read as oud, especially ouds from Initio and also like kind of the more synthetic ouds that aren't more animalic, I guess, or just those stinkier ouds. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It has like a rich oud note, but it's more clear clean than other ouds, I guess. Um, I don't think oud is credited in the notes, but I feel like I smell it in there. So the notes on Fragrantica, as well as the website, like what they actually tell you is in here, rum, vanilla, tobacco, cinnamon. It's just beautiful. Like, oh, if you like those rich scents, I definitely think you should get your nose on it. It is definitely that sexy powerhouse fragrance. It still has that sweetness though, which I find just mm, the perfect balance, a little sexy in there, you know, but still kind of sweet. It is unisex though. I think it would smell amazing on a guy. Like it smells great on anyone. <laughs> it just smells fucking good. So this is like the first one I think I want to get, but Initio is very, very expensive. So <laughs> it's going to take a little bit of time, but I love it. And I do like with these really expensive bottles, I love getting the samples. I love really testing it on my skin, spraying it up. I don't think that even a spray vial is the same experience as like, you know, really dousing yourself or spraying yourself with like a normal perfume, but it is one of the best ways that you can actually like sample a fragrance and know it's going to be worth it, especially when we're talking about these really high price points. So love that one. Next, um, I have a bigger sample of this one. This is Oud for Greatness from Initio. This is probably their most, I don't know, talked about fragrance, I would say. That's that's definitely like how I heard of Initio in general is from Oud for Greatness. I got mine from Luxury Scent Box. You know, there's a ton of different scent subscriptions out there. Let me know if you want me to do a video on that. I know it'll be that's like a kind of a specific video idea, but um, let me know if you want me to give you like pros, cons of each one because I've been subscribed to different ones at different points and I think there's positives and negatives and like really depending on what your preferences are and whatnot, different ones might be right for you. So let me know if you want to see that. Anyway, this is a beautiful Oud fragrance. Like I was kind of saying about Oud before, depending, some Ouds can be very just strong and distinct and a lot, like overwhelming, <laughs> I guess we could say. But this Oud I think is just beautiful. This is a very strong scent still, like two sprays of this. You don't want to like go overboard. You don't want to choke people out, but it is so beautiful. Sam loves the scent. So a lot of the times when we go out, this is what he uses. And you know, this, even this like little spray would last me so long. <laughs> like so long, uh, but for me and just like how I wanna have my collection, of course I want a bottle. <laughs> I want the bottle, okay? I love the look of bottles, just kind of the aesthetic of like a ton of bottles together. I love that. Mm, but this is a beautiful, sexy oud fragrance, very woody. I almost get something kind of, 
mm, aromatic with it as well. It has this beautiful burnt note to it, I get anyway, and that's kind of the oud that I'm talking about because I get that a little bit in side effect too. It just smells a little bit toasted and I, I really like, I really like that. This has notes of saffron, nutmeg, and lavender in the top. It has agarwood or oud in the mid and then patchouli and musk in the base. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful fragrance. Again, you're gonna want something that's heavy. You're gonna want something that is a standout. I think one of the reasons I really like Initio as well is because I feel like their fragrances last a very long time. So although they're expensive, you're getting that staying power. You're getting that strength. And I think a lot of people want that if they're gonna pay the extra price and they deliver. <laughs> they definitely deliver in that realm. Like, you know you're getting this like dense fragrance from them. Okay, last from Initio. This one is Atomic Rose, which I'm not a rose girly. I'm really not overall, but Atomic Rose feels like the right rose for me right now. There's a few of the roses I like. I'm just saying overall, I'm definitely not like getting in on that rose. But this rose, something about it has vanilla in it. I definitely smell bad. I feel like I get that same kind of burnt booty like thing going on. Like it feels kind of like their DNA for me. The rose in it is, I mean, it's there. It's very prominent uh, rose, but I feel like it somehow is like sweet and jammy to me, but not overly sweet or syrupy either. It's just, again, rich. It almost smells a little incense-y to me. Um, I don't know, sometimes with the rose though, I just immediately go Catholic Church, like just my scent uh, memories and kind of associations. But this is a sexy rose fragrance. Sam loves this one as well. I think a lot of guys would really like this. Anyone could wear this for sure, but I do think, you know, with that rose in there, it adds something like a little bit feminine and I do think that it's a very like strong powerful fragrance definitely like sexy leather as opposed to like sexy lace that's the sex appeal I really love it again on my list all three of those there are so many though um absolute aphrodisiac I think is one that I really like like we've gone and smelled like the whole house for the most part and man it's hard to find one that is like bad so in general I'm just kind of obsessed with that house if you want to sample in store I believe they're specifically or exclusively at um Neiman Marcus if you're going to like a department store I know like scent bar locations have them that's where I've smelled them in person as well and then online there's there's different places. They are at Twisted Lily, which I have a code for if you want to sample that way. But yeah, I just love them. All three of those are on my list. <laughs> more to come in the future. Like, mm, I love that house. I got so excited. I should tell you the notes though in Atomic Rose. So top has pink pepper, hedoin, and bergamot. Then there's Bulgarian rose, Turkish rose, and Egyptian jasmine in the mid, and then Madagascar vanilla and amber in the base. Just beautiful. I love it. I, I highly suggest it. It really is just a beautiful rose scent. Okay, let's move on from there. This is going to be, I need to keep this video shorter. I have one from Killian that is on my list. I really want to try the princess scent, but I've never smelled it so like as much as that's on my wish list in a way I haven't smelled it so it's on my list because of the notes not because of me actually experiencing it anyway angel share is on my list another boozy woody sweet cinnamon like apple pie filling type of scent like it is so good I don't know why when I smell it I think of Ikea like it kind of smells like Ikea food court <laughs> Like that's like a cheap way of describing it, but damn, I don't think it smells cheap at all. You're gonna definitely wanna like gourmand. You're gonna wanna like something boozy. You're gonna wanna like something that has a little bit of spice to it and is rich, again, sweet. This is gonna keep you warm in the winter, okay? It's so good. I do find on the dry down, it gets a little powdery, um, but it's, it's a beautiful scent on my list. This one I'm waiting for fall to buy. I'll probably buy it during maybe the Sephora VIB sale again. I'm thinking like that's kind of my plan. <laughs> I just have some tropical scents that I want to get before then. So yeah, I'm trying to time it all out. You know what I mean? So this one has notes of cognac in the top, cinnamon, tonka bean, and oak in the mid, praline, vanilla, and sandalwood in the base. Mm, it's like ooey gooey uh, filling of a pie. I guess I don't get something completely apple. I think it's just the association with the cinnamon. Like it feels like all the things you put on with the apples. So then just extract the apples and whatever that rich kind of goo is inside the pie. Like, oh, Oh yeah, so good. You have to like cinnamon though. You're gonna need to like cinnamon, but so good. I'm obsessed with it. I want this one so bad. Like this will be mine by the end of the year for sure. 
for sure. I think that's the only Killian that's like on my list. Next on my list is one that I, it's, it would be a repeat in some ways for me in that I have a scent that is so similar to this, but I knew I would like this from all the notes and what everyone said. And this is Changing Constance from Penhaligans. I had been on the hunt. I don't even know. I can't even explain to you how many places I went in, saw that they had Penhaligans and was like, do you have Changing Constance? No, no. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought this was the most like popular one, or at least in my circle, like when I'm watching. This is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Again, we're talking sweet, we're talking gourmand. I'm. This is just what I like. You can, can you tell? This is a lot of what I'm into. This is a caramel fragrance, so it has that like notes of caramel, but it has some spicy notes as well. This has cardamom and pimento in the top, caramel and salt in the mid, vanilla, cashmere, and, and tobacco in the base. Now with the tobacco in there, it seems like it's gonna be really heavy, but I find this especially compared to like side effect and angel share which I just talked about like these could all be in the same family or so but this one comes across light and airy so if you don't want something that's too thick and too heavy this is the one you want to go for or what I find is like the complete dupe I didn't realize how much it duped this fragrance out but Minuit Demi which you guys know I love her fragrance Dubois it is like <laughs> <laughs> just straight off rip off. It really is. I mean, they're slightly different smelling on my skin. I actually find the Minuit Demi, which has the same notes of cardamom and pimento and caramel and tobacco, like, same fragrance. And I'm not one to say that. I'm like over here like, let me tell you the intricacies of the details of why they're not the same. But I tell you, they are the same fucking fragrance. Anyway, I do find the Minuit Demi has something like sweeter. It's like just more potent in general to me. And I think I pr I might prefer it. I just have more experience also with it. Um, and I find like kind of in the dry down and how my nose reads it at the end of my smell, that one kind of stays sweeter, but it still has those airy qualities again for it being so sweet it stays airy to me and I love that. It doesn't feel dense and heavy. So same with the Pen Halligans. I do find in the dry down of that one, it almost goes a little, I don't wanna say yeasty, but um, there's something kind of almost bread or wheat or something on the verge of almost savory or just not as sweet to that fragrance on my skin. So I don't dislike it. It's just the only difference <laughs> I can like point out between them. But anyway, I mean, I love this fragrance because I love <laughs> I love Minuit Demi. Again, they're like the same thing. And this one's actually still on my list, even though, again, they're so close, you definitely don't need both. But I just love this bottle. I, I wanna have a fragrance from Penhaligans and I genuinely enjoy this scent. So that one is on my wish list still and I'm so glad I finally got to smell it. I'm pretty sure the Penhaligans one is less expensive than the fragrance de Bois. So if you're going between them, maybe smell that one first or I don't know. I don't even know if you actually wanna test any of these. I'm just telling you it's on my wish list. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, anyway, let's move on to Byredo. I have, of course, Mojave Ghost. This feels like the perpetual wish list fragrance for me for some reason. Like, it's something I know I want, but I never buy it when I'm out looking for a new perfume. I always buy something else, never pick this one up. I don't know what that's about. I've even bought a Byredo since this has been on my wish list, but I bought the new one, the De Los Santos one, so I'm like... <laughs> What am I doing? Why won't I buy this? But I just haven't yet. So I love this scent. This is like a violet, um, more floral, kind of fresh and almost watery scent. It has a really nice sweetness, again, from that violet. It's a very violet fragrance to me anyway. Like as I've smelled more things with violet, I'm like, okay. There's like this candied violet, watery, not too sweet. It's still sophisticated, kind of expensive smelling scent. I associate this with hair product because the hair product I use is literally scented with this. So, you know, to me, it reminds me of like getting ready, wet hair, like a shower, like clean, and it smells amazing. I love that product. And I definitely at some point want the perfume, but for some reason though, it always gets pushed back for me, but I do want it. I do think it's beautiful. And I think if you're not into like the all the scents that I've been mentioning so far, this one might be good. It's in the vein of Cedar Violet from Erin. If you've smelled that, I have that perfume and that one's more woody. This one has a little more sweetness and is more floral, just has more going on, I guess. But if you like something in that realm, I'm pretty sure you'd like Mojave Ghost. This has notes of Sapodilla, Ambrette or Musk Mallow in the top, Magnolia, Violet and Sandalwood in the mid and Ambergris and Cedar in the base. So it's woody, it's violet, it has a floral, it has a little bit of muskiness that I really like in the dry down as well. It's not completely like my obsession style right now and I think that's why it gets pushed back. I also have Cellier from Byredo on my list. This is like a leather fragrance and it's in one of these smaller bottles 
bottles that's like a darker liquid than all the other ones from Byredo. I personally love leather, so that's why. And I don't have a sample of it with me right now, but this has cashmere and black tea in the top, leather and tobacco leaf in the mid, birch and oak moss in the base. So I just wanted to shout it out if you were like wanting to go to Byredo and wondered what I suggested. The smell, I really like that one. I did recently smell the antique Vini. Vini Antique, I don't know, the new one that came out that's also in that like darker liquid. I don't love it. <laughs> I'm so sad. I was like literally going counter. Do you have it? Do you have no one had it. Finally found it. And it literally smells like I don't like the plum I think in it. Just makes it kind of fruity. It's very like woody smelling to me. And it literally just smells like De Los Santos, which I just bought from them with vanilla and also the fruit plum notes. Like I just, I don't know, I wanted a rich vanilla. I was really excited to see their take on a vanilla, but I don't love it. I'm not gonna get that one. So anyway, okay, <laughs> moving on. I don't know how many times I have to say it from Le Labo. I really want Tay Noir 29. This is a black tea kind of fig, like spicy, like just sexy kind of velvety buzzing fragrance. That's how I always describe it. It's kind of aromatic. Um, it kind of has something dry about it and yet still kind Kind of moist and heavy. The notes on this are fig, bay leaf, bergamot, cedar, vetiver, musk in the mid, and then tobacco and hay in the base. This is a really sexy and beautiful, a little bit of a darker, but not too dark. Like you could still wear this every day, a signature scent type of perfume. Mm, it's so, <laughs> so good. Um, there's something kind of spicy about it, but fresh and yet a little bit like shaded. It's almost like you're in a forest, it's daytime, but like the canopy is so heavy that that it's still kind of cool and almost dark feeling. I'm trying to give you the vibe of like darkness or depth that I feel like it has. It's just beautiful, highly suggest smelling it. I have a few from Le Labo. I love my Te Matcha 20, six I think it is I think that's the number at the end Santal 33 is like a classic I do like the vanilla I think that's like a city exclusive um, but that one's pretty interesting definitely a different like non-sweet vanilla another 13's a pretty popular one and I do like that too very musky kind of like Juliet has a gun not a perfume style but anyway that's not what this video is let's keep going this one is one that's going to be on my to buy list relatively soon because it is a tropical scent this is Tropica and it's from Maya Enjai, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. One of you in my fruit basket video commented and said I should try this one out or that you really liked it. And so literally that day I went and bought the sample pack. <laughs> and it is so beautiful. I really love this. It is tropical and woody. And I think that's what makes it you know, intriguing to me because I don't like to go super fruity, I've realized. But this Oh, it's so good. It has a pineapple note. I believe it has a coconut note as well. So you get that tropical sweetness coming off, but then it's grounded by these beautiful wood notes. And so for me and my nose, it adds something very sophisticated and beautiful to it. It doesn't end up going, you know, again, I, I hate to say this, but sometimes fruity notes to me can go kind of cheap or like like the grossest tropical drink. Like it's not a nice tropical, <laughs> it's like syrupy and just, you know, not what you want. This one is so beautiful and I'm so grateful that you suggested me trying it out. I love it. I didn't like like basically any of the other scents from the sampler. This was like the one and then I like loved it. So I thought that was interesting. This has notes of fig, pineapple, coconut, and citruses, as well as ambergris, sandalwood, and iris in it. Just beautiful if you're looking for a bit of a different tropical scent that still has something kind of sexy and I feel like balanced, I guess, to it. Uh, I highly suggest checking this one out um, and seeing if you like it. I also feel like out of the perfumes that are here, it's still expensive, but it's like 140. <laughs> so expensive. That's still so expensive, but you know, it's not in the $340 range and it's just beautiful. I love that one. Definitely on my list and I hope to buy that soonish. The other one that's on my buy very soon list, this one's called Vicious Cacao from Maison Tahite. To heat. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but they do a lot of like vanilla, cacao. They remind me of like Comptoir Sud Pacifique in a way, like kind of similar to that. But I sampled this in a scent bar and this smells so good. It's very sweet cacao, um, but it still has an airy quality to me that I really like. But uh, don't get me wrong, like it reads very sweet, at least to me, but I think it's really beautiful. It's like, sugar crystals, but like verging on Splenda 
sugar crystals. <laughs> I find with most scents that have cacao in them or chocolate notes that that chocolate really kind of comes through at the end or like, you know, as the dry down happens. And this one has a bit of that powdered cacao scent to it in a way. I just think it's a fun one and I think it's like slightly different than other sweet scents that I have while still being a gourmand and it feels like it has its own little like place. This has notes of rum, raspberry, and pink pepper in the top, cacao, amber, jasmine, and narcissus in the mid notes, and then caramel, salt, saffron, benzoin, sandalwood, and oak moss in the base. Lots of notes. I feel like I don't pick up on anything too specific, but the main accords on this are like warm, spicy is the top. I don't get something super spicy, even from that pink pepper note. It doesn't come across that way to me. It more smells like maybe spices that you cook with, but not spicy, if that makes sense. I do find on the dry down, it gets a little bit powdery. I'm not even sure what's quite doing that because it doesn't have tons and tons of like powdery notes in here or things that I feel like I would think to do that, but I think it's really beautiful. It's also a bit more affordable for my list or I think it's like at $100. So that's another one that I want to pick up a little bit sooner rather than later. I think it's a beautiful like sweet scent for summer still, even though it's chocolate and cacao, I think it works for all seasons. All right, next I want to talk about a very interesting and distinct one. This is from Acro and it is Awake. I had heard about this scent because for a while I was really interested in getting a coffee scent and this one keeps coming up on all the lists and it is just so realistic and just beautiful coffee in the scent. Like, if you want to smell straight up coffee in your perfume, that's what this smells like. It almost would smell like you spilled coffee on yourself, like almost, like honestly. It's like one of those espresso shots, but then has like the sugar. So it's like ultra sweet as well as, you know, super strong and rich. It, that's what it kind of smells like to me. I think it's like a fun one. This is like one of those ones I just want this bottle in my collection. I just think it's so interesting and so unique and that's enough for, for me. I also just enjoy smelling it. I don't think it's one I would wear a ton and I think that's why it's been on the wish list for a a while and I'll probably be there until I can like snag it on a really great deal or something like that. But man, it's so beautiful. I actually really like a lot of this stuff from Acro. I feel like they do darker fragrances a lot of the time. Sebastian or the perfume guy did a video more recently, I think on the newest one called Ink. He's just always like, if you just want reviews, you want to know about stuff, like he has so many great videos. I'll leave him down below. The notes that are on Fragrantica for Acro are coffee, cardamom, Italian lemon, and Haitian vetiver. I really just pick up most of the coffee. I do get a sweetness though. It's not overly sweet. It's just rich in general and that sweetness adds to that richness. I don't get anything too spicy though. It's just to me whatever's happening in there it smells like a a beautiful coffee shop slash drink that you spilled on yourself and it's amazing. <laughs> anyway, that's definitely on my list. I want that in my collection. I have two Amber Musks from two different brands. They're both called Amber Musk. One is from Erin. I don't have a sample of that. I wanna go in and smell it again to make sure it's something that I would want. Um, but there's also Amber Musk from Montal that I think is really great. This is one of those skin scents, kind of like you don't know what it is, like someone just smells good. Like it doesn't smell perfumey necessarily. That's what this perfume is. If you are someone who likes the Moroccan oil smell, I think this would be a perfume you'd really enjoy. Those are very amber heavy. This is also amber heavy. It's so pretty and it has this like kind of, again, burnt note, at least for my nose, like something toasty, burnt. I love when ambers kind of have that smell. That's the type of amber I like. Some ambers are really animalic and I don't love them or too clean even, but this one's just beautiful. I think it would be so good just sprayed in your hair. <laughs> like, oh, I'd love that. Again, reminds me of that Moroccan oil. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. If you're looking for something a little more subtle, like again, doesn't smell like anything in particular. It just is a smell on your body. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just like simple like that. This has notes of white musk, ambergris, amber, powdery notes and cedar. Nice and clean smelling, uh, but still lived in there's still like a warmth to it i think i only have four more to talk about my god i'm really i'm really trying here one that's on my list from kaoli is is invite only amber 28 i believe is what it is there's something that definitely comes off a little like almost minty um off the bat it's very amber heavy a very sweet but rich like a richness to it kind of more in line with the initial perfumes i was talking about in this video i get something kind of medicinal again that almost like transitions into something um minty for me 
me, but it's sweet and just a beautiful, rich perfume. Like I just love these types of scents, you guys. Oh, it's Amber 23, not 28. Anyway, this has tobacco leaf, sour cherry, honey, chocolate, hazelnut in the top. Middle notes of cinnamon, may rose, damask rose, citrus leaf. Base notes, amber, vanilla, agarwood, benzoin, sandalwood, cipral oil, patchouli, and musk. There's a million things in here, so it's not like when I smell this, I really pick up anything specific. I think the cinnamon in here is that spice that's almost coming off weirdly minty to me. I do smell the cherry a little bit. I think that's also adding something a little bit medicinal, maybe that mixed with the honey. It's adding some nice sweetness. Like it's just a really nice fragrance. If you want a signature scent that isn't super light and airy, like you're not interested in like those clean scents. This has just a little bit more depth. It has more body, uh, but I don't find it's too dark necessarily to wear as again, a signature all the time. I do find this to be a little bit more like date night, like personally. Kaoli just has some pretty good perfumes, which I didn't initially think that when I started my fragrance journey. I thought they were a little heavy. So um, it's interesting how my nose has kind of changed. Okay, next is one I've gone back and forth on. It's from Goldfield and Banks, which I already own Silky Woods. Love that fragrance, um, but this is the newest one, I believe. It is Sunset Hour. Part of me loves this and it's like as fruity as I like to kind of go. Oh, it's just like, it is fun and it does remind me a little bit of Burberry Her slash uh, Into the Night from Bath and Body Works, but a little bit lighter and like sugared. Like to me, that's the scent I get. It's like maybe a little bit more fruity and a little bit sugared, like the tropical version of Burberry Her <laughs> to me. And I think that association with Burberry hair, which I don't like, is what kind of keeps me on the fence. But I think if I had this, I would really like it. Like I'd spray it on myself, I'd get used to it, like all the stuff. It's a really fun, fruity tropical fragrance from them that I still find to be somewhat sophisticated. It has an airiness to it. Again, kind of like that Burberry Her. I think it's definitely one to try out if like anything I'm saying sounds good. It's a good one. I think it's a mass appealing fragrance, even though it's from a niche house, which a lot of times isn't the case. It's really quite beautiful. And I think one that would add a lot of like some variation to my collection so that I'm not only having like rich boozy vanillas <laughs> you know woody scents maybe try something different anyway some of the notes in here there's Pwandong, I think is how you say it it's a desert peach there's raspberry cashmere wood sandalwood jasmine sombak mandarin orange pink pepper benzoin ginger it's refreshing and light and airy while still being fruity it has some woods in it though that kind of balance it it's a great summer like hot weather fragrance I think okay in a completely different mode going a little bit unexpected for me anyway this one is from Henry Rose. And also let me know, I have a whole sampler on Henry Rose. If you want me to do like a house review or something, this is the scent Dark is Night, okay? Tell me why this patchouli heavy scent has me coming back for more constantly. I love this and I don't love patchouli most of the time, but the, and this smells like patchouli. It's not like, oh, it's, it's patchouli, but it's not, it doesn't smell like it. No, no, it smells like patchouli. But the way that this is done with the vanilla, it's like 50-50. Like they are both competing for the spotlight. I feel like patchouli can sometimes come across screechy and just harsh and it's just like too much for my nose. But it's like the vanilla, I think there's like a vanilla bean note in here. The vanilla like encapsulates it and like softens the edges and just like, adds this richness, like the vanilla is a nice rich vanilla in here as well. And something about it just works. I find this to be very sexy, not for every day, but like date night. And oh, it reminds me of like the black currant one from Bath and Body Works. For some reason, when I find a patchouli that I kind of like, that's what it reminds <laughs> That's kind of what it reminds me of is that like kind of creamy, it's like a creamy patchouli sexy scent. Definitely a little bit dark, but really, really beautiful. And again, really out of my comfort zone for some reason. That's my favorite one from their house. I'm like, who am I? <laughs> but I love that one. It's a little unexpected for me, but it's beautiful. Definitely on my list. Don't know when I'll pick that one up. Again, kind of more for fall and winter for every day or date night for me. So it's one I don't have to have immediately. There's a lot on my list above that one, but it's definitely on there. Like I want a bottle of that at some point. And last, I'm gonna finish it out. I promise I'm gonna finish this video. This is from Ex Nihilo and this is Gold Immortal, I believe is the name. This is interesting because I actually liked this just 
just from smelling it. One of the people at, I believe this is exclusively at Neiman Marcus, if you're going to the big stores, I think you can maybe pick it up from Lucky Scent as well or other places, but if you wanna smell it in store, Neiman Marcus is where you wanna go. Anyway, this is an amber heavy floral scent and I'm not super huge on florals overall, but I'm realizing this smells similar to Instant Crush. If you like Instant Crush, you might like this. I think this is a little more floral heavy, but there's something about it. Now that I've made that connection, I feel like they're just so gosh darn similar. I love the amber in here. I feel like that's what really rounds it out for me and makes me love it. It's one that kind of challenged me initially smelling it. I'm like, huh, do I like this? Do I not? I don't know. And then it kind of just stuck in my mind and kind of expanded what I like. The florals in here are ones I don't normally smell. So it's just, it's a weird combination. I would never think to smell this or try this based off of the notes and just seeing the chords and all that, but in person and actually smelling it, I do really like it. So it has pear and bergamot in the top, peony, and Lee Slang, I'm not quite sure how to say that, uh, but Musk, Amber, and Tonka in the base. So yeah, this one I'm still definitely testing and I have a little sample here, which I was really grateful to get um, to be able to really make sure it's one that I really, really want, but I'm pretty sure that one uh, it's on my it's on my wish list. I couldn't stop thinking about it after spraying it on my arm the last time. So, but anyway, okay, let's end this because this is a very long video. I hope you enjoyed hearing the things that I'm interested in. I'd love to know: Do you like these fragrances? Have you heard of these? Or of course, what's on your wish list? I love getting your guys's thoughts, recommendations, all that. That's how I found Tropica from Maya Enjai, which I really again love. So, um, thank you so much for all your recommendations. I hope I can be even slightly helpful to you guys. And yeah, other than that. I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.